In this video, I'm just going to talk about some of the more basic uh, algebraic and also calculus manipulations that you can do with Maxima. This should be a pretty straightforward video. Just a few examples. Uh, and the point here is not by any means to go through any kind of exhaustive list of everything you can do in Maxima, but just to give you an idea of how to use X Maxima, WX Maxima, excuse me, X Maxima, a different program. So just to give you an idea of how to use WX Maxima, and hopefully after this video, you can kind of explore the menus. You know, you see this stuff. After this video, hopefully it'll be pretty self-explanatory for the most part. So I already briefly talked about solving uh, equations in the first video, and that uses the solve command. You can see that over here in the general math. Remember this? This general math is from Maxima, Payne's general math. There's also some stats, and I, I don't know anything about statistics. I have no idea if that's any good or not, but there it is in case you need it. So, um, and uh, general math. I don't. I, none of these menus have exactly the same thing, but at any rate. Um, this solve button here will bring up a prompt and I can solve equations. So let's say I want to solve um, x squared plus 3 times x minus 1 equals 0 and it's solving for x. So it gives me this answer. I, I guess I probably should have expected that it would be something strange like this. Uh, now there's something that's kind of significant and something that's kind of nice to know. Um, I actually, if if I'm setting it equal to zero, then I don't need to type this in at all. It's sort of implied. So let me retype this, and I'm just going to type it instead of doing it through the prompt. Uh, so I'll do it x squared plus 3 times x minus 1. And now I'm skipping the equal zero and solving for x. And it gives me the exact same answer. So if you don't, if, if you're other side of the equation is zero, you can just leave it blank. Now, that being said, if you want to change it to something else equals five, um, then you can, there's nothing wrong with having it something other than zero, too. But if you want to leave it without the zero, then it'll solve it exactly the same. It just assumes that the other side is zero. Okay, so um, you can also use the solve command, and I'll do it here, to solve for systems of equations. So let's say we have x plus, sorry, y equals 5, comma, because now I'm doing a system of equations, 2 times x um, minus 4 times y equals 0. So now we have two different equations, and I'm solving both for x and y. So I just entered in the two equations with separate, separated by a comma, and then I put the two variables that I'm solving for. And it gives me the results, uh, 10 thirds and 5 thirds. OK, so here's something else that I think is incredibly useful. And that is the partial fraction decomposition. If you're taking uh, either differential equations or difference equations, you're going to love this one. Because whenever you use Laplace transforms or Z transforms, you're going to use this all the time. And by the way, if you're in differential equations or difference equations, I'd also suggest getting a TI-89, because it can do this too. Uh, and um, it, it'll take a lot of time off your test. So that's the partial fraction decomposition is going to be in the calculus menu. If you don't already know what partial fraction decomposition is, um, then Sal Khan has some videos on it that are pretty good. So uh, I'm going to hit cancel right now, because first thing I want to do is define what the fraction that I want to do partial fraction decomposition on is, so I'm going to say 1 over x plus 2 times x minus 1. So 1 over x minus 1 times x plus 2. So I would want to do partial fraction decomposition on the previous answer. Now it assumes that my variable is n, so I need to change that to x. And so it fills in the answer for me, and it does the partial fraction decomposition for me. So it's pretty straightforward and easy. And I don't, if I wanted to, I can just put the, the fraction directly into here in, instead of, instead of um, doing the previous answer as well. So if you're doing Laplace transforms, when you want to find the inverse Laplace transforms, you can use that. Very handy. Um, it's, in the, it's in the calculus menu. Why it's not in the algebra menu, I don't know. But algebra is actually pretty much a linear algebra, just FYI. 
Okay, so uh, here's a few other um, calculus functions as well. We can differentiate. We can so if we want to find the derivative of x squared plus x minus sine of x or something like that, and uh, we want to take the first derivative. That's what this times is, and we want to take it with respect to x. So we will find that it is negative cosine oh yeah because we had a negative sine x um, plus 2x that makes sense so okay it didn't quite put it in the order I expected it to but this the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x derivative of x is going to be 1 and the derivative of negative sine x will be negative cosine x now notice this 1 here at the end this means it takes the first derivative if you leave it off and just say just take the derivative it'll take the first derivative but if you wanted to you can take the second derivative or you can take the third derivative oops I, I that sorry about that so this is the third derivative of this function um, and one of the nice things about having a CAS instead of a numeric calculator like MATLAB is that you can take symbolic derivatives you know you don't get a number back you get the third derivative is cosine of x and we can also do integration so if we wanted to do some some evaluate sorry integrate something let's keep this one simple x squared let's add something complicated plus sine of x just because we can because we're not doing it by hand so it does, this makes it just as easy for us to just type in sine of x for no reason we're um, doing dx and we can make it we can make it indefinite integration or we can make a definite integration let's first do it indefinite and then let's do a definite after that so hit ok and it gives us x cubed over x minus cosine of x it just integrated it for us and that's it now let's do the same thing but let's um, do x squared plus sine of x now let's do a definite integration let's go from negative to to 5. I've actually never seen this before. I don't know what it does. <laughs> I imagine it probably... Oh, I know what it does. Um, it, that means it... Well, it's a long story what that means. Um, the special probably means... Oh, it just means like constant. So if we want to go from negative infinity to infinity, or if we wanted to use e or pi, um, this is just going to fill it in. So if you want to go from negative infinity, it fill in m infinity, uh, probably... I would imagine that negative infinity would be the same thing, but I've never actually tried it. So at any rate, we want to. We, this, that's going to diverge if we do that. So we want to do negative two to five. Numeric integration just means it does it a different way. Um, that means it would do it more like the way MATLAB would do it. I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe I should make this video if I'm not exactly sure what that's going to do, but I'm not going to do that anyway. So now it integrates, and we get this kind of funky answer. Um, which is why we're glad we're not doing it by hand, and why we're we glad we have WX Maxima to do it for us. Okay, so one more thing that I want to do, one more calculus thing, and that's solve an ordinary differential equation. Now, um, I will warn you that the success of solving ODEs is limited, and that's actually not so much a limitation of Maxima as much as it is that we as human beings really don't have a whole lot of tools to solve ODEs altogether and in the real world um, ODEs are mostly solved with numeric solutions that you'd find in MATLAB rather than exact solutions and the the manual will tell you some more tools that Maxima has for solving ODEs but here's a quick example uh, I want to solve uh, and, and this is going to be kind of strange, whenever you put derivatives in for solving ODEs, you have to put an apostrophe first, before you have difference. So like, I want us to have um, the derivative of y with respect to x, the second derivative, plus the, uh, I'll make it two times, just to, just to mix it up a little bit, two times the derivative of y with respect to x, and I'm not going to put the first root because it doesn't matter, plus y, it'll make it equal zero, make it a homogeneous equation. And it solves it for us. With this, this let me, let me translate this to make it a little bit easier. 
Um, sometimes whenever you're writing it out, you can see it in your mind more easily what you're doing. This is saying y double prime plus 2 times y prime plus y uh, no, no prime, sorry, equals 0. So it's a homogeneous equation. We can solve it pretty easily using um, Oh, the method name of the method escapes me. Escapes me. Not variation of parameters. You could use variation of parameters, but um, undetermined coefficients. You could solve this equation fairly straightforward and easily using undetermined coefficients. Or actually, you don't really even need that. I mean, that's a since this is a a um, linear equation, and uh, there's there's a word for this that where it have constant coefficients. You can just solve it using the characteristic equation. And you can see that it has, um, oh, uh, it turns out, I didn't even think about this, this has repeated eigenvalues, eigenvalues, repeated, I guess it's eigenvalues, at any rate, uh, I'm not, I don't use ODEs a lot, so uh, anyway, it has, this is the solution to the ODE, um, it has two constants, um, K2 and K1, and it has this X here because it has a repeated um, when, when you solve r squared plus 2r plus 1 equals 0, the characteristic equation. When you solve the characteristic equation, this r is going to have uh, one solution with multiplicity 2. That's why you get this x here. So, the bottom line is that um, wx maxima had uh, a way to solve this particular ODE. Now, this is a pretty simple ODE. If, if you if you've never had differential equations, then it's not simple. But, but don't don't fret. It's it, it's terrifying when you first see it. I understand. Um, but uh, at any rate, that was a, a quick example of how to solve for ODEs. Now let's do a summation example. So, I want to go up to calculus and do a summation. Calculate sum. And I'm going to solve one over and. It presupposes k, so I'm going to stick with k. And I go from k, let's say squared, 1 over k squared, from 1 to infinity. I'm going to go ahead and keep it that way. Now, I want to keep this checked, and you'll see why in a second. I'll hit OK. And it gives me pi squared over 6. This simp sum at the end, let's, let's solve this again without the simp sum. So it doesn't actually solve it. <laughs> so that's why the simp sum is important, and that's why it showed up at the prompt. So let's do this one more time, but let's, let's change it around a little bit. So let's change this to, instead of k cubed, I mean, instead of k squared, let's make it k cubed. And now it gives us zeta of 3. Well, what on earth is zeta of 3? Well, we stumbled upon the infamous Riemann zeta function, and this is actually zeta of 3. If it were k to the power of 4, and we, there's no reason why we can't do that, uh, k to the power of 4, well, this is actually zeta of 4, except in this case, we can, we can get an exact solution. But k to the power of 5, no one knows what, k to the, what zeta of 5 is. So, neither does maxima. So, it just returns zeta of 5. Now we have these plot 2D and plot 3D, and I'll go ahead and do an example of that. Let's do um, x squared minus 3. This is just a, a plot of x squared minus 3 uh, from negative 5 to 5 is fine. Um, there's a bunch of options you can do here. You can do polar. Um, you might want to look through the manual to see more about exactly how to do that. Um, you can do logarithmic scale, you can do special, you can do parametric or discrete. Um, we're going to do more with parametric plots later using a very specific tool to do that. So let's go ahead and plot that. So it plots the graph x squared minus 3. Notice something else. Um, this says wx plot 2d. Well, let's copy that cell and do it again but now do it without the wx. That wx is not actually a maxima thing, technically speaking. It's a wx maxima thing. What that means is that it's going to take the graph and put it into your um, in, inside wx maxima. But if you do just plot 2D, it brings up a whole new, a whole new uh, uh, window that you can, you can kind of 
well, you can't do a whole lot here, but for, since this is 2D, but if this were a 3D graph, and I'm going to do that in just a second. Um, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Whoa, I zoomed in. I actually did not intend to do that at all. Um, but, well, that kind of proves the point that you can manipulate it. You know, you can mess around with it. Uh, and that can be very useful sometimes, too. So now let's do a, a 3D plot. Um, and we'll say x squared plus y squared. That's going to be some kind of cone thing. Not well, not a cone. That's not the right word, but uh, it, it's a. You'll see it. <laughs> and we'll go from negative five to five on both of them. That sounds okay. And see what it does right there. That's kind of cool, I think. Now let's do it. Something that we can manipulate more easily. So now we can actually turn it around. So we can do th this neat stuff with these 3D graphs um, using this external program GNU plot, and of course we can change the options. Instead of going from negative five to positive five, we can go from negative ten to positive ten, and these don't actually have to match. In fact, we can go from negative one to positive ten. This is going to look weird, but it still works. Actually, that kind of looks kind of cool. It's, it's kind of a looks like something you'd want to run a skateboard on. Um, not that. I'd be willing to do that because that, well, <laughs> well. At any rate, this is um, a way that you can mess with uh, 3D plots, and we're going to, in a later video, deal with much more complicated plots, both two-dimensional and three-dimensional. All right, that concludes this video. The next video will get into um, matrices, and after that, we'll be defining our own functions. Alright, see you in the next video.